And I remember going to see Rory Gallagher and he would have a small amp. What did you have? A, a small band. Did you have a, a flannel shirt. Did you have a, did you have a, did you have a, did you have a, his hair in his eyes a little bit. And it was all about him playing the guitar. And it got into your soul. Through the 70s, he, he uh, built a reputation um, as a live performer of tremendous uh, vitality. I think that there was a sense in which people in Ireland uh, didn't fully understand or recognise how successful and how enormous a star uh, Rory was. He was a pioneer in terms of the festival scene. He was involved in Rock Palast, which was an enormously important Europe-wide television event. It's a measure of Rory's status that he was the key attraction, but then there were very few places where he wasn't a major rock figure. I thought I was one of the few guys around that was really dialed into him. Like he was my sort of favorite artist at that time and I was very much a fan. There was something incredibly authentic about Gallagher. I mean, we all dressed like Rory Gallagher, you know. He didn't care about image, he didn't care about money. This was a man who was after the truth and whenever he hit a chord, he knew he vanished to a place that an artist should be. The actual formation of the test, I feel, was, was the break because I had musicians who kind of thought alike and, and we, um, the sheer enthusiasm that, and, and the joy of having a group at all. Taste became one of the, one of the big uh, three pieces at the time. Tastes were astonishing. Rory Gallagher was obviously a gifted and extraordinary performer. At one stage I wanted to be a footballer and a cowboy, like any other kid, but really, I mean, since the age of six, I mean, I wanted to be a musician. I guess I would have been about 14. We got a bunch of records from a mate. One of them was one of the Taste albums. Everyone is saying what to do, what to think. When you ask permission, when you really want to blink. I just played it all the time. I remember getting up the morning of the Isle of Wight, knowing that the band were having arguments, and the equipment had been nicked out of the van. The Isle of Wight was just so electric, they stole the whole thing. They did five encores, and I thought, well, after this, they've, they've got to see the merits of sticking together. There was a lot of badness in the air at the time about that whole thing, and so he decided to disband taste. In fact, it was absolutely essential to Rory's career that he would make that move and that he would leave the taste. I laid on my pillow, I cry myself to sleep. I'm in no hurry. I like to stay foot loose for a while yet. Anyway. But you can never tell when you're going to be caught. Is it the first ever rock festival in Ireland in McCroom in 1977? So at grassroots level, his contribution was huge. In fact, he was, he was even headhunted to join the Rolling Stones at one stage. So Rory was a real hero for a whole generation of genuine rock fans. One of his big heroes was Muddy Waters, you know? So I don't think, if your hero is Muddy Waters, you aren't thinking about how you can go cut a really hot single with horns that'll be played on the radio. We all recognize the contribution that, that Rory Gallagher has done the Fender Stratocaster itself. Won't you give me money, baby? I'll catch a turn and go. No, you don't want me hang around your door. That's why I choose to move it on. As 
somebody who maintained his integrity and maintained his authenticity throughout his career and never compromised in any way, Rory provides a very important benchmark, a reference point for musicians, whether in Ireland or, or elsewhere.